This Use a Play is brought to you by. Barbados's largest and fastest 4G network. Activate any Lime prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today. This is the Barbados Today afternoon update for Thursday, November 13th, 2014. I'm Don Paris. Historian Dr. Henderson Carter says the poor of Barbados cannot emerge from their state of economic deprivation without free university education. Delivering the feature address at the final installment of the two-part lecture series in celebration of the 375th anniversary of the Barbados' Parliament, the UWI lecturer says there can be no mistaking the impact free education has had on Barbadian society. The historian traced the struggle of Barbadians of the early 20th century that led to parliamentary decisions in the 1960s, and he insisted that Barbadians deserve free education because their four parents fought for it. I also want to say that state funded education is becoming the only way out for the poor in this country. There's no other way except, of course, to play a we could win a million dollars. But that's a luck and a chance. <laughs> it is the only way up for the poor. And my view is that the children of the poor, the children of maids and gas attendants, must always have access to free tertiary education. Their ancestors have already paid for it. Banks Holdings is pouring cold water on a recommendation from the International Monetary Fund that attacks be imposed on soft drinks. Chief Commercial Officer Ray Chiatau warns the move will hurt business at the Barbados Bottling Company given the state of the economy. Our biggest challenge is that the environment that we're in right now, it's a value economy. People right now are concerned about their disposable income. Uh, the beverages that we produce we do not produce high end. Nothing in our portfolio is considered a luxury good. And therefore, there would be an immediate impact when you take a commodity where you uh, have to use your disposable income, your limited disposable income. So, our concern would be that uh, any kind of taxation would then go straight on to the consumer. And that is where the concern would be for uh, overall volume of production. And Commerce Minister Donville Innes made it clear that the IMS recommendation is not a done deal. I don't want people to, to start planning their lives, either personally or in business, as though what is proposed is to plan the position of government. We're still a sovereign state, and the executive arm of government resides on the street, and the legislative arm resides in the very strong parliament not in Washington, D.C. Barbadian political strategist Hartley Henry is caught up in emerging controversy on the election trail in Dominica. The opposition United Workers' Party is claiming that Henry is meddling in the island's political affairs and on one of its election posters it charges that Dominicans are voting for Roosevelt Skerritt, that's the Prime Minister of Dominica, to make Bajan Hartley Henry in charge of their government. Barbados today pressed the opposition leader, Lennox Linton, to explain the party's grouse with Henry, and he says Henry has been cooking up all sorts of schemes with Prime Minister Skerritt. Everywhere we turn, why we would like to ignore him, this gentleman is in our face, he's in our business, he's, he's, he's working over time to determine for us who our government should be in Dominica, and therefore... At some point in time, he has to receive some attention. In response, Hartley Henry snubbed the opposition's complaints and he made it clear he won't be drawn into any UWP sideshow. There's regional and international news after this short break.
The Barbados Food and Wine and Rum Festival, November 20th to 23rd. Taste the culinary delights of top local and international chefs like Marcus Samuelson, Anne Burrell, Tyler Florence, Roger Mooking, Michael Hines, Dane Sadler, Daphne's Restaurant, and more. The Barbados Food and Wine and Rum Festival, 5th edition, November 20th to 23rd. Visit foodwinerum.com or contact Premier Event Services, Inc. at 435-0670. Get your tickets now at Wine World or Ticket. To the region now, Jamaican pilots employed by Caribbean Airlines issue a 72-hour ultimatum to the Trinidad-based carrier that they will go on strike if their concerns are not addressed. The pilots say they are fed up trying to secure bargaining rights on their behalf for nearly three years with no success. They're taking issue with demands from Cal that all its pilots must be represented by the Trinidad and Tobago Airline Pilots Association. But the Jamaican pilots maintain they cannot be represented by a union outside of Jamaica. Further afield, violent protests continue to rock Mexico. Demonstrators set fire to the state assembly in the southwestern state of Guerrero and damaged the office of the ruling Institutional Revolutionary Party along with other government departments. In recent weeks, thousands have taken to the streets over the government's handling of the case of 43 missing trainee teachers back in September. Anger has been escalating since last week after Attorney General Jesus Murillo said that evidence suggests the students were murdered by gangsters incinerated in a bonfire at a garbage dump and their ashes thrown in the river. Well, that's where we end our Barbados Today afternoon update. We'll be back again this evening. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and our email updates, and of course, like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or on screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And don't forget, you can also tune in to Channel 101 on Line TV to get all the latest news and sports from Barbados Today. I'm Don Paris. Enjoy the rest of your day and join us this evening. This news update is brought to you by...